Seven months. It's been seven months since I did my last worst best video. That was the final worst best video for Battlefield 5. Well, now we have Battlefield 2042, so it's time for a new one. Yo, what's up guys? It's T-Bag, and today we're finally gonna do another worst to best ranking video. For all the new subscribers, just so you know, this series used to be kind of a staple of my channel. I did a bunch of them in the past and I always enjoy making them. Today we're gonna rank every specialist in Battlefield 2042 from worst to best. In this game, there aren't many things that you can rank in my opinion, because for example, it doesn't have that many guns per weapon class. Class. It doesn't have too many vehicles. I guess I can do the maps from worst to best, but other than that, there isn't much there. But regardless, if you want to see more worst to best videos on the channel, then be sure to drop a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe. I have a couple of very cool projects in the work. You don't want to miss that. Anyway, if you have some other cool video ideas for me, or if you just want to chat, be sure to join the Discord server. Link is down below. Without wasting any more time, let's start with the very worst specialist in Battlefield 2042. Reporting for duty. Mr. Rao himself, or Ro, or however you pronounce his name. This is an Indian specialist, and do you know what skill DICE gave him? IT hacking skills. I know, you can make this stuff up, but for real, Rao is actually pretty trash, I'm not gonna lie. He has some sort of hacking device on his forearm that allows him to hack enemy vehicles and enemy infantry, as well as certain environmental elements like a bridge or roadblocks and stuff like that. It all sounds very cool, but it's actually pretty useless in practice. For example, when you hack an enemy soldier and then kill that enemy, the enemy squad mates will appear highlighted, kinda like a wall hack. It sounds pretty powerful, but honestly, it takes a really long time to hack an enemy and by that time, it's just better to shoot them. Hacking the environmental elements is also pretty useless. It looks very cool in the trailer, but honestly, nobody uses that and it doesn't have an impact on the gameplay at all. The only thing that his hacking skills are good for is hacking vehicles, because if a vehicle is hacked, they can't use their equipment anymore. So one clever trick you can do as Rao is equipping an anti-air launcher, hack an enemy helicopter so they can deploy the flares, and then it's actually very easy to take the helicopter down with your anti-air missile. That's literally the only real benefit I can think of when it comes to Rao's skill. So that's why I have to rank it at the very bottom. The next specialist on the list, so the second worst one in the game, again in my opinion, is Casper. Casper is the cool looking recon dude and his special abilities are a deployable recon drone and a movement sensor. The reason why Casper is so low on the list is because yet again these two skills don't have much of an impact on the game. For example, the movement sensor displays the direction of enemies that are nearby you, so if somebody is sneaking up on you, you'll get notified. I initially thought that this ability would work similarly to how the high alert perk works in Call of Duty. The way it works in Call of Duty is that your screen will flash when an enemy actually looks at you. So for example, if somebody is targeting you from your right, the right side of your screen would flash, notifying you that somebody has you in their sights, which is actually really useful. Unfortunately, the movement sensor doesn't work like that in Battlefield 2042. It only notifies you of enemy movement in very close proximity, which is, in my opinion, pretty useless. However, Casper's drone on the other hand can be pretty useful. Its main purpose used to be blowing it up with a C4 near a tank, which was a lot of fun, but as of recently, that is not possible anymore. So the only thing you can now do with the drone is, I guess, spotting people, which is pretty decent in modes like Breakthrough, that's pretty useful, and you can also shoot an EMP blast at enemy vehicles. It's basically the MAV from Battlefield 4, but kinda trash. It can be useful sometimes, but not much. Next up on the list is Jisoo Paik. I hope I pronounced that correctly. She's also known as the wall hack specialist. At least that's what she used to be because when she was revealed in the specialist trailer, everybody lost their minds because her ability looked stupid overpowered. She has a scanner that allows her to see enemy silhouettes highlighted through walls, aka wall hacks. Now it was nerfed pretty drastically in my opinion. The way it works now is actually in pulses. So when you activate the scanner, it sends out a bunch of pulses through the environment highlighting enemies. These are very short pulses, mind you, so you don't have the highlighted enemy constantly on your screen. You just see them for a split second 
and this happens for the duration that the scanner is active which is unfortunately very very short. The range of the scanner is also not that amazing but the worst part by far is the cooldown. After the timer for the scanner is done you have to wait for an eternity for it to be available again. So all in all instead of overpowered it's actually kind of garbage and that's why almost nobody is using this specialist. I must mention that she also has the threat perception ability which highlights enemies that damage you so you can return fire more effectively but I honestly didn't really notice that while playing with her so again it's not that good. Also, she has the most annoying voice out of all the characters in the game. Yes, even more annoying than Angel. Let's make the impossible possible. Next up is Dozer. This specialist is actually pretty straightforward. He has a ballistic shield seemingly made of the same material that Captain America's shield is made of because it can pretty much stop all projectiles in the game. However, this shield got nerfed too. Initially, the shield was able to redirect incoming fire to the enemies themselves, but it seems like that is not the case anymore. Now, the shield is just a way to protect yourself and it can be useful sometimes, especially when pushing up to an objective. It also has a bash attack which deals 100 damage, so again, in close quarters, it can be very good, but it's very one-dimensional. It doesn't offer a whole lot of tactical variety. If you're pushing with multiple people though, it's a lot better actually, because you will draw enemy fire, and it gives an extra piece of moving cover to your fellow soldiers, and Dozer also has more resistance to enemy explosive, which is also nice. But all in all, not that amazing. Up next is DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled! I mean Boris Johnson. This is the guy with the sentry and he's not very good actually, he's more annoying to be honest. Boris can place down a sentry turret that automatically targets and shoots enemy players. It sounds pretty interesting, but like I said, it's more annoying than anything else. Which, actually coming to think of it, is a good thing, because if the turrets would be too powerful, it would just be a mess, especially with multiple turrets. The real strength of Boris comes into play though when he's near one of his turrets because as you can see by the footage in the background, every target that the sentry turret sees is highlighted. So again, it's kind of a free wall hack. I've noticed a lot of wall hacks in this game. Combined with the damage of the turret itself, you can create a pretty powerful defensive position, especially with multiple sentries. Up next is Irish. This is the point where opinions can differ regarding the placings of the specialist. To be honest, you can easily swap Irish with the next specialist on the list which we're gonna talk about next but first let's talk about Irish. So Irish has two things that alone make a bigger impact on the gameplay compared to the previous specialist. Irish can use two deployable covers or two trophy systems or one of each. You can place these things strategically and create a very powerful defensive position and similar to Boris that's his main thing defense. In terms of offense capabilities Irish is not the best, but you can definitely make it work with the deployable cover and it's also perfect to create a disgusting head glitch to snipe from. He also spawns in with more armor which gives him an extra 10 health. And to be honest, I don't really like the armor mechanics in this game because it throws the damage profile of certain guns completely out the window, but it's in the game, nothing you can do about it. That extra 10 health often requires an extra shot to kill from certain weapons, so it can be very useful sometimes. All in all, I think this is a very decent specialist. Also, rest in peace Michael K. Williams. Next up on the list, I have Maria Falk, the medic specialist. Nothing too much to say about her, honestly. I initially thought she was pretty garbage, because right now in Battlefield 2042, every specialist can equip a medic crate for fast and easy healing. But her strength actually lies in holding positions with fellow teammates, because she can revive extremely fast, faster than any other specialist in the game, and when she does revive someone, that person will come back with full health instead of like 50% health. So that alone is very good, but her Serac pistol is also amazing. Honestly, you can use it defensively to keep your teammates health high at all times from a distance, or how I like to use it, to heal myself on the fly. I already mentioned this in a previous video, but you can just shoot at your feet with this red pistol and heal yourself faster than the self-healing animation. This is also great while in the heat of the battle to keep your health high. A great specialist all round. But now we enter the top three. This was actually a pretty easy choice for me. Next up on number three, I have decided to go with Webster McKay. McKay is without a doubt one of the best and most fun to use specialists in the game. Now granted, his end of round voice lines are next level cringe. I am not overconfident. I'm just better than everyone else. But he more than makes up for that with his grappling hook. The grappling hook allows you to play in so many different ways, it really enhances the gameplay, honestly. If you want to get higher up to snipe, no problem. If you want to traverse the map more quickly, no problem. If you want to use it to do some crazy flank on your enemies, 
no problem. Honestly, the grappling hook is extremely good and it creates one of the best moment to moment gameplay in Battlefield 2042. The reason why it's not higher up the list is because it's actually very map dependent. For example, on Manifest, the map with all the shipping containers, it really excels. But on a map like Hourglass, for example, the grappling hook is pretty much useless. So I can't place it any higher than this. Oh, and also McKay can move faster when aiming down side compared to other specialists, which is a nice bonus. This specialist has really good offensive capability. Up next, so the second best specialist in the game is without a doubt Sundance, aka the wingsuit specialist. Now, playing as Sundance is in a lot of ways very similar to Webster McKay. It's not only extremely powerful in the right hands, but also a lot of fun. Honestly, some of the best moments in this game for me is just doing crazy stuff while flying through the air with the wingsuit. And unlike the grappling hook, the wingsuit can come into play on pretty much every single map because they definitely made sure that there is always some sort of verticality pressure to use your wingsuit. You can use it to traverse a very large area very quickly. You can use it to get behind enemy lines in breakthrough. This is especially effective when you have the spawn beacon. Or you can just use the wingsuit to get the hell out of there when you are in a lot of trouble. Lots of different uses when it comes to the wingsuit. Sundance also has three different types of grenades as a gadget. On top of your regular grenade, so you have a scatter grenade, EMP grenade and tracking anti-armor grenades. The latter especially is actually really really good. I already took out countless of vehicles with this grenade. Sundance is an easy pick for number two. But now for the number one spot, the best specialist in the game by far actually is... Don't be sad, this is just how it works out sometimes. Angel. Now I'll admit this guy is not as much fun to play as compared to Sundance and Webster McKay, but he is definitely so much better. He's literally a jack of all trades. He's able to give ammo and dish out armor plates for extra 25 health points and that includes himself. So basically, if you spawn in as Angel, you have 125 health. That's more than everybody else and that already makes him better than Irish to be honest. He can also revive people and although they don't come back with full health like it is the case with Maria Falk, they do come back with max armor, which is essentially better because when their health is fully regenerated, they have more than the base health. So in that sense, he's also better than Maria Falk. And on top of all this, he can call in a loadout crate to replenish all ammo and equipment. And it also gives you the ability to swap weapons. This guy is like a one man army, easily takes the top spot. And that's about it for the video. Of course, this is just my opinion. Let me know down below what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can also join the Discord server. Link for that is down below. And with that being said, I see you guys next time.